Hello and welcome to another video from Paraplays and today I'm going to be visiting the gun shop again. It seems quite a few people on my channel have been asking me if I'm going to be doing some more airsoft videos as you seem to be quite interested in the whole aspect of milsim and skirmishing and what's involved in actually getting into airsoft. So I'm going to be documenting quite a few things over the next month or two including some skirmish matches and a little bit of objective based based gameplay coming this week but in this video I'm going to be going back to the gun shop patrol base to get my M4 Amoeba Chronoed. For those of you who are not quite sure what that means it means they can check how many jewels I'm actually firing these pellets at and I need to make sure that I'm within legal range which is currently 350 on burst fire so if my weapon is under this or it's too hot these guys can adjust it with springs and I'll show you the whole process of what they did to my M4 to make it legal. So let's jump onto the range, get it chronoed, and find out whether I need a new spring or whether it needs reducing. Is it 350 site legal for UK? So you've got any weapon that is shooting semi and full auto, it's 350 FPS. Yep. Uh, most sites. When you go down to locked to semi auto only, most sites will then let you run at 400, but there might be a minimum engagement distance, so there might be a, a 20 meter safety distance because you're running a higher powered rifle. Um, you also don't got, need that one, but yeah. Yeah, that's it. And you've also got um, a 500 FPS limit for bolt action guns, but you might run an even larger engagement distance, so it might be like a 25 meter engagement distance. We're going to do a chrono test. Effectively, all we're doing is we're measuring the speed of the BB comes out of the barrel. Right. Um, then we, when we know the weight of the pellet, you know the speed that gives you a jewelage or an energy rating. Okay. Um, so we shoot through the chrono, we will get. So we're getting around 86, 87 meters per second. So when we translate that, what is that? that works out 282, between 282 and 285 feet per second. So is that well low? So that's that's safely under. So you could take that up. Oh. 350. Um, or you could go even further, lock it to single and go to 400. It's just a matter of what set is going to work best for you. Um, I do like the burst, three round burst. Yeah. Best thing you can do is take it up a little bit closer to 350. Right. Um, and that's, that's easy. Would that be a reason why it, don't shoot that far and it is dipping down? Could that be. It's not so much. Effort. I've got to get used to from shooting real rifles to remember that these things are not going to go as far as a. a because these things are so yeah. underpowered compared to a real rifle, yeah. effectively what they do, they have a set of here which is called a hot unit. Yeah. Basically, what it does is a rubber tab that presses down into the barrel, and as the BB comes past it, it puts back spin onto the BB. Got so you. As it comes out the barrel. So more back spin, it's going to go up, yeah. less down. More back spin. More pretty curves. Got you. So you've got the ability to adjust how much backspin you want to put on. Got you. So you can use this little wheel to wind up and down, and that will adjust how much backspin your gun has, which will affect. Yeah. Now I will admit I had a little twist to that, but I don't yeah. know how far you would need to twist it in order to be able to get any. Because obviously, the range I was shooting at was probably half Similar this half that. this length again, maybe, and yeah. it was definitely curving down quite a lot. As you rotate the wheel down, yep. it increases the hop-up on this model. How much? Is it like one full rotation? I mean, I was moving it just like a little... Yeah, you've got one, basically, to go from no hop-up to full hop-up, you've got one full rotation of the wheel. Oh, I won't, I won't do it so, enough then. Yeah. See how it shoots. And you can see that actually dipping slightly there, so it wants a little bit more. Little hop that more. mother. Give it a little more. Yeah, now what's surprising to me is I was actually shooting a biscuit tin with bricks in it, right? And it was like I was trying it was going ding, ding. I thought, yeah. God, it's so weak. I got to a biscuit tin, there were dents in it. Yeah, yeah, it's um... so I was actually quite surprised. That even though it don't look like they're moving that fast. They do stink. There was quite they a yeah. Stink some. Yeah, I know I shot myself in the foot with a pistol as a tester, <laughs> limping around like a knobhead for about 10 minutes. Yeah, barefoot. Right, so in order to increase it, does that mean it's a new spring? Or what's the actual procedure then to so, add more juice to it? On this one, it's all based around the spring, yeah. um, which is in this top section there behind a plastic piston. Yeah. Uh, and effectively what you do on this model is you undo this nut, remove the stock tube, and then there's a nut in the back which you undo, slide out your spring and slide in a new spring. 
So it's not a matter of, I was thinking it was, if you imagine the screw. Yeah. I was imagining it was almost like you would turn one end, you know, to, ah, to, right. to add no, more no. tension. It doesn't work like no, that. No, no, it's, it's basically there's a piston at the front. Yeah. And then there's a spring behind. And as the gearbox rotates, it pulls the piston back and releases it backwards and Got forwards. So, so these are the springs. And as you can see, there is the rating on here. So it's probably going to be a 90 or possibly a 110, but trimmed down a little bit so that we can get to that magic 350. Really simple on the quick change spring models. All we have to do, pull off stock. And these are similar in assembly to a proper AR. So undo the back nut. And that will allow us to undo the stock tube. Just making sure that we keep the wire out of the way. That whole thing will unscrew. And that then gives us access to well, the back of the gearbox. Today, but if you can help, that's great. I've got Mr. Townend out there, Mr. Waiting. Cool. Very long so, time all we have to do is a little bit. So, James has just said, uh, cannibalise the parts from this, and then we'll repair this one as and when we can. Undo that, and yeah. it gives us access yeah. to yeah. So the little Allen key. Okay, in the back. Turn, and that brings out Got the guide rod and the spring. So that's the stock spring. That's doing about 280, 290 feet per second at the moment. It's quite easy to compress. So we'll change that out to a heavier duty spring. To the beast. We'll pop the beast in and see what that gives us. Half turn, and there we go. We'll do a recrawl on our you see. It might be a little bit warm, but we'll have a look. Yes, we are. Currently, that's given us 403. Mm. Is that slightly over then? Just over. <laughs> so we have to trim it a little. As you can see, I was actually advised that the spring needs trimming in order to get that down to legal because I wanted to use three round bursts. Not the most complicated of procedures, but it's certainly something that I couldn't do. So if you're going to get your gun chrono and you want to go up or down, make sure you go to the gun shop and let them do it properly. Last thing you want to do is damage your beautiful M4 or whatever weapon you've got. Now on screen... I said for a friend of mine, Christiansen, he wanted me to have a look at the grease gun, and here it is. And while it feels great in the hands, it certainly didn't really appeal to me. Not my style of weapon. And here we have the Browning High Power Pistol for Stu, another one of the lads who's quite keen to get into this. He's got real military background, as most of the lads that I uh, hang around with on TeamSpeak and play most of these Milson games with now. So... I can tell you now, Stu, it felt absolutely fantastic to this. It was really, really heavy. In fact, it looks chrome, looks the tits as well. Even the magazine or the clip was really heavy, and I was told it was one-to-one -one weight, one-to-one -one replica, because it was licensed. Here you've got, I think, if I remember rightly, is this the Smith & Wesson? Um, is it the 58? I can't remember. I don't think it's the uh, Dirty Harry 44 Magnum, but again, just amazing they feel fantastic and this is of course the infamous luger so if you've got a fetish for any type of gun or period of weapon you can probably get it and hats up for the first person who can tell me what this is old school you have the opportunity if you want to get into period stuff they even they were telling me they had some is it black powder muskets and things like that in but of course that sort of thing is very niche within an already niche market. The AUG was amazing. I'm probably going to get one of these in the future to go on my gun rack. Brilliant. Felt really, really good. Now if your budget is a little bit less, as you can see the one on screen there, Stuart in black. This is going to be going for around 180 to £200. And I was told that if you're into the AK series of guns, there is something in here for everybody. But much unlike just picking a gun and saying, I want this one, I want this one, there are considerations, of course, on whether you go for gas or spring or all electric. But I hope you've enjoyed this video. Just a really quick sneaky peek behind the curtain. And I shall be giving you some more updates on my clothing that I'm going to be wearing and some detailed feedback 
on the first objective based skirmish team based game coming this weekend which I will be uploading so let me know if you appreciate this video and you want to see some more I certainly will do some more including probably a video on my Tokyo Marui PS4 pistol and I may even do a video on the webbing and tack vest and things like that anyway I've been Paraplates I shall see you in another video going real soon thumbs up subscribe can I get to three and a half thousand well I can only ask Bye-bye.